Hello there kitties, I'm Kerry, the vacuum tube witch. And see that box on my bench? It's project time again. <laughs> it's a project that I uh, paused uh, a few months ago and rediscovered it now. It's in a very discombobulated state. And uh, what is it? You'll see. Let's get to the bench. So we've got a box of stuff. And what's inside? It appears to be um, a show of an old telephone. The the base and dial of this telephone. It even has the, the handset. Some uh, metal enclosure. And the thing that you are probably most curious about. <laughs> yes, it will include Nixies. I will tell you about... Uh, this uh, little device in a jiffy <laughs> so uh, telling you about this device this is the Caritac Electronics ADHD01 advanced dial home device one of my crazy projects <laughs> with too many variables And uh, I started building this project last year, uh, sometime, sometime uh, around uh, March or April. And uh, uh, the, um, the story behind this project is that uh, I uh, I had a friend who was squatting an old uh, chemical lab and I got uh, a lot of uh, equipment from the lab <laughs> some of that equipment I'm gonna do some uh, turndowns and uh, either keep them uh, as they are as uh, some kind of a museum piece or, or I'm gonna just uh, modify them and take them apart and uh, use them in my projects Anyway, uh, the ADHD project, uh, oh, there was some cat fur under the, in the box. The ADHD project uh, was built uh, from an enclosure from uh, a uh, magnetic sticker and uh, a measurement uh, module from a uh, pH meter and the telephone I found it in the trash and I decided to make a device that would uh, send a uh, request over the network, get the data and display the data on uh, those Nixie tubes. <laughs> uh, but uh, I had some projects some problems uh, with this project. Uh, originally I uh, used a, uh, a Raspberry Pi, uh, I used uh, a ESP8266, um, the Node MCU module, but had some problems with, uh, with programming it and with some uh, hardware interrupts, uh, had some shenanigans. Uh, so uh, the project uh, went to the box, uh, got stashed, but uh, I was thinking about it. And uh, at some point uh, down the road, uh, I got a uh, Raspberry Pi Pico W that has uh, incomparably more GPIO pins uh, available uh, to use. And one moment, please. Let me grab my engineering notebook. Uh, 
and zoom on in. So uh, this is the pinout of the of the Raspberry GPIO uh, zero one uh, and so on and so on and so on. This is the raw USB power. This is the three point three volts uh, DC power. So uh, there's just a metric shit ton of uh, GPIO pins available. Way more than I need. Even uh, even uh, if I consider the full functionality of this device, <laughs> because I want to use the number dial for uh, for controlling uh, devices uh, over the local area network. Using the MQTT protocol, the message queue and telemetry protocol, pretty popular in home automation projects. And uh, I want uh, I want the Raspberry Pi Pico W to display numbers uh, on the Nixie tubes. In the previous version of the project, I uh, I used the Arduino uh, Pro Mini the, for uh, controlling the Nixies. Uh, it basically has uh, four outputs used for for BCD encoded uh, number and the binary coded uh, digit decimal. That is uh, that is just uh, <coughs> four bits, um, one, two, four, and eight, and uh, and you just uh, use a combination of uh, of bits uh, for every number up to ten. You can uh, you can code a uh, hexadecimal number, but uh, BCD is uh, about decimal numbers. So uh, we've got four pins uh, for the BCD. We've got uh, four another pins for the for the latch uh, inputs uh, of the quadrupole um, D flip flops on uh, on the seventy four seventy five uh, chips, and we've got. Uh, We've got two additional pins uh, for the positive and negative uh, sign uh, on this special Nixie that's there only for displaying the, the sign or sine wave symbol because this uh, module was uh, previously used in a, uh, in a meter. So uh, then the Nixie tube, uh, the markings on the Nixie tubes, we've got uh, Z5730M for the typical numeric uh, Nixies, and we've got uh, Z5510M uh, or uh, Z fifty five twenty M for the sign Nixie. Those two transistors uh, control the, the the sign, and there are also three additional uh, lines, uh, also controlling the transistors uh, for the decimal point uh, of uh, of those three. Numeric Nexies. Uh, then the fourth Nexie doesn't have the decimal point uh, in use because uh, because it's just no point. Plus there is the voltage regulator on this board. Uh, this was the original printed circuit board that I uh, stripped uh, from uh, every unnecessary part and uh, used it uh, for mounting the the node MCU that uh, that was here 
and the and the Arduino Pro Mini. But uh, there was also another pitfall with uh, with how I did it uh, in the previous version. It's a uh, it's about uh, it's about uh, RF shielding. See the way it was uh, the way it was done. The, the node MCU was placed here. It has uh, the Wi-Fi interface. And then it was covered with metal. See where I'm coming from? Shielding. It would uh, it would be just uh, shielding the RF signal. <laughs> Not a good way to design electronics, right? Not a good way. So I decided. Uh, to redesign uh, this little project of mine and uh, use the Raspberry Pi that has a lot more inputs and uh, might not uh, have the hardware interrupt problems I had with, uh, with the ESP8266. So, uh, let's take apart uh, the previous version and it might be pretty handy to attach uh, the, the base plate with the, with the Raspberry Pi. I, I used, uh, oh, I used uh, pin headers uh, for for mounting the the raspberry so that I can take it out if I need it. So let's take this apart. I was also uh, thinking about uh, adding some audio functionality to, to this project like uh, using the using the headphone <laughs> to to play some uh, announcement and maybe even to record audio. <laughs> and that would be pretty cool. Of course, uh, of course I will have to dismantle this uh, whole assembly now. <laughs> and I will uh, attach the wires to to the new points and my my idea is that uh, since I need four four lines uh, for BCD plus two lines for the for the sign plus uh, three lines uh, for the for the commas plus uh, five volts plus ground then I will need a uh, 11 uh, 11 wires on the on the ribbon cable so uh, that's a little bit too too few because uh, I've got only only nine uh, wires on this cable, so I will have to grab a, uh, a different cable. But uh, that would be that would be for the for.
for the display controller connection. So uh, I will probably do those uh, those uh, tedious uh, wiring uh, off the camera. Because uh, there's also some uh, reverse engineering uh, to be done. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't always uh, remember how I uh, how I did my projects, <laughs> so I have to figure them out again. If I don't keep the schematics or notes. So this, uh, this term, temporary terminal strip goes away, it goes away, just go away for crying out loud. Yeah. And now I will try to figure out how to attach the the Raspberry Pi. This this patch of uh, of hot glue. It also has to go away. Um, uh, some cutting uh, or trembling might be necessary in the in the mechanical fabrication phase. Plus, there's one more modification I want to do. It's uh, it's about making this assembly and assembly slightly slightly easier than it was because uh, see if uh, if we've got the the phone enclosure yeah come on come on what's going on What's going on with you? Ah, oh, yeah. I can see it now. But uh, we've got uh, three screws for, uh, for holding the phone enclosure. The phone enclosure is attached to the top of uh, of the metal enclosure, but there's no uh, access uh, to to those uh, screws uh, through the through the metal plate, which means that uh, in order to open the phone, I have to unscrew the phone's uh, num phone's uh, attaching nuts, take the phone uh, out, minding the ribbon cable going through here, and only then I can access uh, those, uh, those screws, so I, I just have to drill the holes uh, in, uh, in the plate uh, where those screws are, and uh, and then I don't uh, have to unscrew those nuts at all if I want to open the phone. Uh, 
And now, uh, what I can do now is uh, attaching the the Raspberry Pi Pico. I uh, will probably have to drill a hole. I will uh, either have to drill a hole or just do another trick. <laughs> I can see how I can do it. Might not be very elegant, but uh, like uh, like if I If I can match those holes now. I don't think they are gonna match. Neither those. Oh, there's a higher probability that uh, those will actually match. It's just about placing the micro USB connector. Against uh, against the uh, existing hole, but I can also drill drill the hole in the in the phone. Then the hole for the plug, and uh, and then just uh, attach the. The board uh, right here. Oh yeah, and the and the neon uh, indicator. It could use some cyanoacrylate. Ain't gonna fall apart anytime soon. So, I'm in for some design work and uh, and also some drilling. That's gonna that's gonna take me a moment. So uh, it's gonna take a bunch of hours or days to to make this uh, this little device. When I when I finish. Uh, I'll share the results. So I am now back at the bench with uh, all the parts for the ADHD project. I did uh, I did a lot of rewiring and recompatibilization on this. Then the cables between uh, the boards they are completely new. The inside of the phone is uh, also uh, completely rewired. Let's take a closer look. We've got two switches. The, the rotary dial and the LEDs, they go uh, to the perf board with the sockets for the Raspberry Pi. Here, this is left for the future. I'm planning on uh, adding an open board uh, for the 
for the handset um, speaker and microphone. And here we've got then the Nexi board without the former mess of cables. We've got uh, cables uh, entering the hole and then uh, routed to the integrated circuits. Those cables go to the latches uh, on the D flip flops, the 7475. Those cables go to the ABC and the binary coded decimal uh, inputs uh, on the latches. This is the power wire and this is the comma and uh, sine wire. So, what else do we have left? It's time to put the thing together. So, uh, start by soldering the ground cable. The circuitry is now grounded. Time to put the board in its place. The board is now in its place. And fastening can commence. Oh, by the way, I might might do it a little bit different. Start by putting the the nuts on the on the uh, bolts uh, in the front. And then the Nixie part will just slide in. Mm, need some help on this. looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Now, attaching the board. On this end, I think I will just use the regular knot. Come on. Time to connect the power.
attach the front panel. <laughs> I can clearly see this is going somewhere. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. And the time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Just kidding. It's Fire up time! Power, go for launch. Uh, this is typical if we don't have the signal on the control lines. It will try to light up uh, all the sections. And now I will check uh, if uh, I'm not going to blow up the Raspberry Pi. Checking on... Checking the power with the multimeter. Hmm, that's interesting. Ah, I know what I got wrong. Yeah, I know what I got wrong. <laughs> I was expecting 3.3 volts uh, with no Raspberry in place and I wanted to test uh, 5 volts. Testing for 5 volts, it's... Yeah, let's get the multimeter in place. The enclosure is grounded and here I should have 5 volts and that's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. <laughs> so, circuit is go for launch. Installing the Raspberry that is initially programmed. <laughs> And let's try firing it up. <laughs> Which it is showing some numbers. It's showing some numbers might not be this might not be the the correct sequence, but uh, it's definitely showing some numbers. And I think that from now on, I uh, might just uh, put the enclosure together because uh, the audio circuitry, I think uh, that will be some uh, additional functionality that I'm not planning to do right now. But what I'm gonna do is putting the enclosure 
back together because uh, I made a larger cutout for the USB for the USB plug uh, on uh, on the Raspberry and I can use that uh, for uh, for uploading the new code so uh, I uh, I might as well close it now And uh, the, the thing that I mentioned before Oh, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? It's, uh, it's best to put the cover facing downwards And uh, those are the holes that I mentioned that I needed to make. Makes reattaching the, the phone cover a breeze. So yeah, the phone cover is uh, reattached and the enclosure is coming back together after so much time. After so much time the, the project will continue. The advanced dial home device. Yeah, let's find some M4 nuts. And that would be pretty much it. Of course, now the serious work of uh, software engineering awaits me. The power of software bugs shines within you. Wanna fire it up again? Sure as hell you do! So that would be it for the Advanced Dial Home Device project for now.
expect some more videos on it after I uh, do some work on the code. In the meantime, keep up the good work and see you next time. Bye!